Hi, my name is Robin Joy. I'm a pleasurable visibility coach. I support women who are ready to step into their big dreams by inviting them to awaken their innate erotic power. Over the past couple of weeks, I've had the good fortune of interviewing several women who studied with me at the Tantric Institute of Integrated Sexuality under the tutelage of Layla Martin. And in these conversations, we talked about how we utilize our coaching tools to support women in various ways and men and couples in various ways. And we also talked about how we use these tools ourselves, how they've transformed our lives and how we continue to use them as a support while we build our businesses. And I wanted to pull out some of the practices that each of these women have shared and taught to us actually as part of the as part of the interview series that I did, each of the women taught some practices or really shared in depth some practices. And I wanted to pull those out and put them in a video together for you so that you can hear how we all support ourselves, what practices really help us to support our nervous systems and to stay connected to pleasure as we all step into our big dreams of building businesses, coaching in sex, love, and relationships. have to share two um yeah. one for like a solo practice and then one with a uh, one with my partner oh, perfect. um my solo practice that I go back to again and again and again um because I've now developed that that sensitivity to feeling you know where my my true authentic core expression comes from and that's very much in my heart um mm -hmm. and I've given her a uh a body and image and she's my warrior you know she's mm -hmm. shoulders back heads down you know war paint on her face um and i love the practice of um of, of primal breathing of mm -hmm. doing like the fast inhale <sighs> mm -hmm. and energize my body and feel and I, I i breathe into my heart and i feel big and and pleasurable uh, pleasure filled here in my heart and then I allow it to start to circulate mm -hmm. so the primal breathing that turns into the microcosmic orbit of you know mm -hmm. rolling that energy around and through into my body till it you know reaches out into every single pore in my body um, mm -hmm. that's one of my favorite practice rituals is breath alone incorporated with you know just touching you know touching mm -hmm. yourself um, it can, you know, move into the practices that we've done a lot where, you know, you do have an orgasm at the end or simply just a quick, you know, fill me up in the car on the way to a meeting or, you know, that kind of thing like that, that breath and that energy that, you know, comes alive inside of me is so amazing. And I go back to it again and again and again. Amazing. Um, the one that I go back to, um, again and again with my husband is the practice of fears, loves, desires. Oh God, so good. Yeah. <laughs> Setting that container to be able to, to speak, to sit, to hold, and then to be listened to. Um, we actually just did it again here. Um, I want to say like two, two or three nights ago, um, sat and did the fears, loves, desires again. And it just opens up and moves into the most beautiful connection um, and the most beautiful space, you know, um, I think that a couple, you know, can ever really, you know, have and move into um, and that, that sacredness and that ritual of, you know, spending that time intentionally because we're always on our phones. We're always, you know, you know, looking to be entertained cortically, whereas fears, love, desires really gets you down into to your body, into into the, the primal brain of what you're feeling, what you're sensing. You know, what do I really love? about you? What do I really desire uh, from our relationship or from our lovemaking tonight? And what am I really scared of? You know, mm -hmm. rather than the, the superficial, you know, this is such a beautiful container to, to get in and experience that. Yeah, yeah, really true intimacy. And one of the things that um, I've done in, in women's work is actually had women pair up and do fears, loves and desires, which is really a profound experience too. Uh, I think it's when we tend to want to fix. We want to like, you know, it's like someone says they're afraid of something and we're like, oh, I'll fix that for you. And I have all of these <laughs> solutions. And, uh, and yet it's really, really powerful to just sit and hold space for the experience of another woman. And then just to feel inside your body what it feels like to, to just allow someone to come to their own conclusion about things or to allow someone to just truly express without 
jumping in and fixing and and i mean so it's such you know even if you're not working with a partner directly it's such a great exercise and so do you want to just explain briefly how that exercise is done so that if anyone's watching and is like i want to do that um that they could maybe even give it a try with their partner with a friend uh, today absolutely Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Fears, Loves, Desires um, is where you take the time to sit uninterrupted. Um, so make sure kids are in bed or you're in a space, you know, in a quiet coffee shop kind of a thing if you're doing it with a friend. And you get a timer and set it on your phone. Uh, up to you. Me and my husband have now graduated to seven minutes. <laughs> Ooh, wow. <laughs> I think we started out at three or four minutes. Uh, you set the timer for and you take turns. So the first uh, person taking the turn is the, the asker of the question. So you're the one that's going to be sitting there and asking um, your partner um, or your friend, whoever you're doing this with, um, what are you afraid of? And that's all you say. Let them speak until they come to a natural pause. And the only other words that you're allowed to say are thank you. And then repeat the question again. What are you afraid of? Thank you. What are you afraid of? And you keep going to that until your timer goes off. Um, and then the, the second question is, what do you desire? Thank you. What do you desire? Thank you. Um, again, until the timer goes off. And then the, the final one um, that me and my husband do is, what do you love about me? Thank you. What do you love about me? Thank you. And I find, I, I thank you for pointing that out to do it like with friends or, you know, mm -hmm. um, you know, outside of the relationship of, you know, being a uh, husband and wife, you know, even to do that, you know, with, uh, I'm thinking now, like with my mother, you know, that would be yeah. super powerful, um, mm -hmm. you know, exercise to do with her to experience, you know, not, not trying to fix, not trying to, you know, come at it, but it's just let her be and, you know, mm -hmm. listen to her. And then to have that, you know, back just to be able to speak and do whatever you want and say, because so much, you know, as a little girl, you're too much, you're, you know, don't do this. You're too emotional. You're this, you're that, you know? And I find like that is really just cracks open that space to just let you be who you are and feel oh, yeah. who you are. Yeah. Yeah, so um, women who are watching, we can, we'll, I guess we'll do it closed. Um, yeah. yeah. So when I teach this to clients normally, yeah, I would teach it like I would teach it now. And then when you go away and do it yourself, you can um, you can do it over your bra or you can do it with no clothes on. It was really nice to get that skin to skin contact. Um, and you can use a skin friendly oil like a jojoba or a coconut oil. Um, so I'm going to teach it the way that I do it, so it might not be perfectly, <laughs> perfectly textbook. Um, but I love just to get, um, we can all get imaginary oil on our hands <laughs> um, and just um, rub our hands and just feel the contact of the skin and feel the warmth of your palms. And you can imagine that you've got this lovely, lovely oil there and just feeling the connection um, through your arms to your heart. And then I like to blow some little kisses to my palms. <laughs> just filling them up with love and then just starting to really gently bring them towards your breasts so just like Layla describes it in the most beautiful way like the hands of a long lost lover <laughs> or exactly the way that they would like to be touched and just bringing them really really closely in and in the way you can make contact and just feeling that connection of your hands to your breasts and your breasts to your hands feeling your heart as well and then you're just going to start to really gently massage up on the inside and down on the outside. So I'm going to click a button. <laughs> just really gentle strokes that feel good. And just allowing yourself to really soften the whole heart area, the whole breast area. And just letting yourself just feel however you feel. Just easy, full breath. If you want to, you can start to add a little squeeze of the pelvic floor just on the inhale, squeezing the pelvic floor on the exhale, just softening. It's optional if that's too much to remember with the breath, just do what feels good. Just really connecting to that softening feeling in your heart and in your breasts. And then we're going to reverse direction so go back the other way up on the outside down on the inside 
And this time as you're reading, just imagining that you're <laughs> popping buttons everywhere. <laughs> so elegant. Um, just imagining that you're drawing in whatever you would like to feel more of in your heart and in your breast. It could be love, safety, pleasure. Just really taking deep, full breath. you finish just gonna cup the breasts towards your chest so just a little bit firmly and just give them just a little bit of bounce and you can imagine that you're just shimmying some of this beautiful energy you've created through your body just spreading that heart energy that open heart breast loving energy through your body you can close your eyes i always feel like i've done that intuitively and and just coming to stillness, just feeling the connection with your heart, with your breasts, and your hands. <laughs> one that maybe you turn to the most or do the most or feel the most affinity for? Yeah. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's my favorite because favorites are really hard for me. And it's like, yeah. oh, I have so many favorites, but, um, the one I do the most, like on a daily basis would be the microcosmic orbit. Mm -hmm. And that's because it's, it's like sending energy through your whole body, like in a circular pattern. And, um, like I do that when I go on walks, I do it with nature, I do it with my partner, I do it when I'm just feeling like stuck or blocked, like I do it all the time. And I feel like it actually happens now without me even trying to do it. Like I said, like that book and like how I felt energy like surging through my body, it's like it just started flowing, like it just started going the way that it goes in a microcosmic orbit. And I certainly was not like inhaling deeply and exhaling deeply, like I was just standing in my kitchen like chopping vegetables, you know, so... Yeah. It's like, it's, it's pretty powerful how it, it actually kind of takes, it's like your, your body wants to flow energy in that way. And I think like the more you do it, the more it just starts naturally happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so um, for those that are watching this, they may have not heard of that practice or done that practice before. Do you mind giving a quick demonstration or telling us how to do that practice? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, it can take some time to master. Like, it depends on, on the person and just, like, their level of energy connection and where they're at and then also just how many energy blocks that they have inside of them. Like, for me, I didn't, I didn't know this before doing this program, but I'm, I've always been, like, a very energetically sensitive person. So mm -hmm. the energy practices are what resonate the best with me, and I picked them up like that. Like, mm -hmm. I, it's like I do them once and I got it. Mm -hmm. But my partner like he he wasn't that way and so it was actually really cool to watch his process because like for the mm -hmm. microcosmic orbit for example I think maybe it took him like a year or maybe maybe six months or something but you know it took him a very long time to like move the energy so just understanding that like I'll show it to you or I'll describe it but like if you don't get it don't be hard on yourself or don't you know don't just throw it out the window either um, also within it, like everyone's energy is kind of different. So some people's energy moves like molasses. Other people's energy is like lightning. Like my energy is like lightning. It's almost mm -hmm. like it has this whole life of its own. It's just like, <laughs> so, and so also just recognizing that because sometimes, you know, I, I had to learn that the hard way by teaching because I like to do things very fast and I recognize mm -hmm. like, Oh, people need it slower. <laughs> like a lot. <laughs> so, so basically what you do is you imagine I mean, I'll do this version of it. There's, there's quite a few versions of it and it could go way more in depth, but right now we'll just, if, if you're, well, actually, if you're a woman, you can imagine it energy, a ball of energy, either in your cervix or in your perineum. Um, typically for women, it's cervix, typically for men, it's perineum, but I am very much under the self-guidance of like, you can feel into whatever part of your body you want to feel into. Mm -hmm. I'm not as into like genderizing things. Mm -hmm. um, so just whichever part of your body feels more comfortable, feels better to you and like feel just this ball of energy growing in that area. So it's like, you can imagine it almost like this 
little orb of like silver moonlight or maybe it's like bright sunlight, whatever kind of light works for you. And then we're going to inhale that ball of energy up our spine. So you inhale and feel that energy moving up your spine through the back of your neck all the way to the top of your head. And then exhale and feel that energy fall down the front of your body, almost like a waterfall. Then move back into the cervix or the perineum. And you know, it, it can help if you really spend some time like getting your energy moving before you do it. So even right now you could do like some hip circles or just really try to get a little bit of movement going. Like I've been sitting here, so it's not, I'm also really physically cold. So, you know, <laughs> your, your circumstances can affect it. And then you can try that again. Inhale up your spine all the way to the front of your head, up to your crown. It's like you feel the energy really vibrate there. And then exhale down the front of your body, back into your cervix and inhale up your spine. Exhale down the front of your body. Inhale up your spine. And exhale down the front of your body. So that's the governor channel. That's like the yang direction. And then you can also do it the yin direction, which is like more watery. So then you can inhale it up the front of your body to the top of your head. And then exhale it down the back, down the spine, back into your cervix or perineum. Inhale up the front of your body. And exhale down. And one more time, inhale up the front of your body. And exhale down. And it can help move the energy like on the inhale if you like pull up on your pelvic floor or if you like squeeze, squeeze um, your sexual center, it can really help move that energy. Um, and there's a lot of different layers to the practice that you can do. That was kind of like the very basic version of it. <laughs> What would you say has been like your most transformative tool or practice or something that you've gotten from the, uh, the coaching tools that we use with clients? Like what ones you enjoy or do the most or have you found the most impact from? Yeah, there's a few. One is that I really like is to, you know, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths and then focus on your hands and then really starting to stroke mm -hmm. your own body with like so much gentleness, so much softness to your whole face, the arms, all the way to your toes. Like just before you wake up or before you go to, I say it again, before you go to sleep or after you wake up. <laughs> <laughs> but really like, yeah, tuning into your own uh, touch, like really feeling your own body and filling up your body with your own touch, mm -hmm. with love, with, you know, acceptance. And that's so nurturing. That's really like calming down uh, the nervous system. So that's one of my favorite practices because it's very easy. And then uh, another practice which I really like is just shaking. Like when I feel stressed or like there is something going on, just shake and uh, sticking out my tongue and sounding is really, really helping to just, you know, it doesn't even need to be five minutes, just one minute, two minutes. And it's already giving such a big uh, shift. Like after that, I close my eyes and I really stand still and I tune into my body and then I can just feel my whole body buzzing mm -hmm. and feeling alive. Mm -hmm. And um, one more, can I share one more? Yeah. <laughs> one other favorite practice is to again, like meditate and really focus on my breath mm -hmm. and to imagine that my breath is like my own sensuality, like, like mm -hmm. a lover, you know, moving really gently into my body and filling up my body from the inside out. And then really connecting that also to my womb, to my vagina, to my uh, vulva and really like, yeah, filling up my whole body with that sensuality, with that sensation that just comes from, from breathing. And that's just, yeah, amazing, powerful sensation. Yeah. So I'm curious what your favorite practices have been or what you do right now to, um, to cultivate, I guess, 
maybe around, you know, what helps support you and your nervous system as you step into these big dreams with your business? Yeah, well, actually, the one big practice that I've been really working on the last couple of weeks that has really served me well, and it's actually right in alignment with this conversation about money, is um, like taking some time in the morning. So a morning ritual is actually really huge for me to start my day off. And that's been something I've been really actively doing for the last year, whether it's five minutes or half an hour, but sitting down, I light a candle, I have my coffee, like <laughs> maybe light some sage. Um, but this practice particularly, I've been like closing my eyes and really tuning in and allowing myself to dream big. And I know you and I have talked about this, but I, I feel like naturally as a child, I had a really strong imagination. So I allow myself to like tune into my imagination and dream about this sort of life that I want to create for myself. And then I sort of tune in, I'll ask myself the question after I've given myself, let's say, two to five minutes of dreaming. Mm -hmm. I'll say like, what is blocking me from having this? Mm -hmm. And then I scan my body and I notice like, what's the thoughts that pop up or the feelings or a sensation um, and I'll tune into that. I usually have my journal nearby so I might write it down so I can kind of take note of it and then I'll set the timer for five minutes. We're actually, I usually pick a song so you can set a timer or pick a song but usually it's a song that I can like dive in that's about three to five minutes and I'll breathe. So I'll like think about this blockage and I'll breathe on it like breathe into it and I allow it to sort of transmute through the breath. So as I breathe into it, I like connect to the sensation or the feeling that's with it. And then I allow it to move through me with each exhalation. And so it's a really deep breath, like in and out of the mouth. And after that song's complete, then I turn on another song that I really want to shake my booty to. And I will turn that song on and I'll dance and like stroke my body and I'll say things to myself like, I am worthy of abundance or I am worthy of having a voice in this world or whatever it is that I'm working towards, like changing, right? Like changing that story. And so I say like, I'm worthy or I am deserving or just really affirmative I am statements. And then at some point, I like just imagine money floating down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh, <laughs> and I just pretend I like pretend money's in my hands and I like rub it all over my body and I imagine like flowing into my heart and like piling up around me and I'm like dancing in it and talking about how worthy I am of <laughs> having it. <laughs> So that's like, it's been actually really, really big because I think sometimes, you know, we have these dreams, but we don't necessarily tune into what could be blocking us from that. And, and it's actually evolved for me too. So the bones of it are there, but like lately I've been getting triggered by social media. So I'll see other things and I go into comparison mode. And so then I'll feel that into my body. Like, where is that sensation? What does that feel like? Why, you know, where is the judgment or the feelings of unworthiness coming from? what is that you know and get really curious and again breathe through it and then dance and like you know sometimes it is like a booty shaking song and sometimes that's really tender and it's just mm -hmm. like about like loving myself or loving my inner child so you there's kind of a lot of ways that you can use that but for my business it's really served me in like feeling once I'm done with the song I have like this feeling of empowerment like I'm like yes I can do it. <laughs> I love that so much. And I'm just curious if you um, could explain the breath work a little bit more so that if someone wanted to try this at home, they could actually, um, they would know sort of how you work because because it would be a specific breath work practice, I'm assuming that you're using. Yeah, yeah. So usually I'm laying back a little bit more like I'll lay on my couch and um, it's just like a relaxed open jaw. So just opening the jaw a little bit, which is kind of hard to do when I'm talking, but I'll just <laughs> no. share it and then I'll do a demonstration. <laughs> but the breath comes in and out of the mouth. And like I say, it's, it's um, connect, I think it's a deep breath where I'm connecting to like my body. So I start to tune into the sensations of my body and I send the breath there. 
And then as I connect to the sensation or the feeling or the emotion, like usually every feel like I'm feeling an emotion has a sensation that it's rooted in. So mm -hmm. I allow that, like I connect to it with the inhale. And as I exhale, I let it move through me. Mm -hmm. And I usually sound with it. Sounding is optional, but you know, it's a, it's a process of being really curious. Like sounding can be really hard for people because we've been sort of conditioned to to like only make really pretty sounds or like <laughs> porn star sounds or like, <laughs> so this yeah. is really good too for like blowing through the feeling that, you know, you need to sound a certain way, but I'll connect to the sound and or the sensation and let it sound through me. And the breath is usually connected. So I try mm -hmm. to stay with the inhale and the exhale. So I'll give you a nice demonstration. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna close my eyes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so opening the mouth. So as you can see, it's sort of connected breath. And again, that's what I sound like. You might sound totally different. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> if you're judging me, that's your precious. <laughs> it's so fun. Mariana, Mariana and I talked at length about sounding too, because um, we just, you know, in, in terms of like, be the freedom that comes with making sounds. And I was talking about how I had made some videos for the Nourish program where we work with the alchemizing the emotions and uh, and moving them through with sound. And so after, I, like I recorded it and then watched it and I was like, oh my gosh, I look like that and I sound like that. And it was actually quite comical to just see yourself on the web. That's why I was like, how many times <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. it, you know once you get used to it it's not like you know you don't have that same sort of self-awareness or self but at first it's like okay this is really I remember the very first time I think it was doing Layla's oh bliss I think they're sounding in oh bliss I believe and I remember just like this is really strange. I don't know if I feel okay doing this, but it's, you know, after a year, it's like of, of doing that regularly, it feels very comfortable. And I could say definitely one of the most liberating. Yeah. I think it's really comfortable and really powerful. Like it's like, there's definitely, there's something to it. And so I would encourage, I heard, um, someone shared with me, like, if it feels really hard at first to try and make like animal noises. So if you oh. like, like tune in and like, you know, you're like, oh, or something like that. Like, just to help move the energy. Because yeah. like, sometimes yeah. you can just be so stuck in your mind. So to like, bring a level of playfulness to it too. So. Yeah, because there's also that sort of overthinking of like, well, what does the sensation sound like? So if you just get into the like liberating and using sound as the liberating force, then mm -hmm. then it doesn't matter what the sound actually is. It could sound like a chicken, it would be fine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. And one other practice that I do that I think is really, really easy and worth mentioning, because it's something I, I make, like it's, I do it every day because it's so easy, is like when I get out of the shower, um, I'll find like a song that I, again, want to dance to. Dancing for me is really huge. And I never would, I'm not a dancer, but I think like, you know, these hips don't lie. Like there's something in there. <laughs> so um, I usually put like a song on and I have a ritual of, it's either coconut oil or lotion, and I rub my body like in a sensually, lo sensually loving way. So, um, again, like if, if someone's listening and they have the body shame issues and stuff, this has been really huge because I, I offer words of like love as I touch my body. Like, I stroke it and I'm like, oh wow, like I just love you so much. Or, you know, I get to my thighs because sometimes that's a bit of a tender subject for me. And instead of being like, oh, they're so big, I'll be like, <laughs> Thank you so much for like getting me through life. Like you get me everywhere. I'm so grateful. You're so strong, you know. And and same with my breasts. I usually do a huge breast massage too. I think you guys went over that. But like a breast massage and just like stroke 
and like love up on myself and then whatever's left in the song I like I just dance like and, mm -hmm. and touch my body and like get into the flow and I find that's like a really awesome way to start the day right like it's just connecting to your body and like again like I call it the sexy soul sway because it's like to move your hips I think like, you know, there's so much erotic power in like our pelvic bowl. And so to get the energy moving through like swirling the hips and busting even. Start your day off in the most juicy of ways for sure. So I am curious, uh, like we've done so many practices and I know that you are working primarily with couples in your work. And so do you have a favorite practice that you would like to share with us? Absolutely. I love a practice called What Can I Offer You Right Now? Mm -hmm. And so in this practice from like five minutes to an hour, you offer, you say to your partner, what can I offer you right now? And maybe your partner is desiring, um, like I do frequently, like just pat my head, right? Or maybe whisper sweet nothings in my ear, or maybe I want you to kiss my neck. And after about a minute, you ask them again, what can I offer you right now? And quite possibly what they desire has changed as our desires do change. Once you get what you want, you want something new. And so you continue asking over the course of however long you've set your timer for, and the, your partner gets to receive whatever it is that they really truly desire. And then of course you switch. But I think this practice is so beautiful because like for myself, I always had a hard time feeling like it was okay to ask for what I wanted. Mm -hmm. and in this practice you have to ask for what you want yeah. so it's incredible to to be able to do that mm -hmm. it's it's definitely made a big shift in my love life like just asking for what I want like oh my god you will actually get it it's amazing <laughs> you definitely won't get it if you don't ask so asking for for what you want and then your partner being able to receive, to hear what you're asking for and give it to you, and you being able to specify continuously what you want over the course of the time. And like, they can't, well, they can, but like the point of the exercise is obviously <laughs> like, I'm offering to you exactly what you want. What I'm doing isn't wrong because a minute later you want something different. You just want something different and mm -hmm. desires ebb and flow and it allows both of you to be very very present with one another and very allowing allowing mm -hmm. of your own desires allowing of your partner's desires knowing that these things are going to change and that's totally okay like just give me what i want now <laughs> and like and getting to give your partner exactly what they want feels amazing as well mm -hmm. like your partner's pleasure is your pleasure if you're open to intending that and receiving like the pleasure cycle, yeah, especially because it feels like as women in this culture, we're not, we're not programmed to think about what it is that we do want. So when we're asked what we want, we're like, oh, I don't know. Cause you're not spending time like touching yourself on a regular basis or being like oh, a little to the left or you know like whatever a man might do in his life to really really know exactly what he wants so this exercise definitely gives you an opportunity to be like oh this feels good and that doesn't feel so good but this feels really good and, wow. and discover all kinds of new sensations in your own body and what you like and what you love and mm -hmm. what you <laughs> Yeah, and what you hate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I thought I'd try it, but please don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's okay. There's permission for that too, which is really nice. So there's not the hurt feelings. It's like, let's, it's allowed to be an exploration. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Setting the intention for exploration makes it so much more like non judgmental. 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I love the idea of like a really long time. I think I'm going to try that with my partner. Like an hour sounds like quite delicious, actually. Yes, <laughs> I did a babysitter do for an hour each. That would be an incredible way to spend the day. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Um, and so I have a big question. This one's like a huge one and, uh, it always leads to some great conversations. So I'm curious, what, um, do you want women to know when it comes to awakening their erotic power? Yeah, I think, I think the thing is that your erotic power is already inside of you. Yeah. And I find like when I'm not feeling sexy or when I'm just feeling yucky that I can <clears throat> allow myself, like for me, it's breathing again, right? Breathing and sounding. If I just breathe in all of like intending for all of the energies that I desire in my body, if it's sensuality or sexuality or to feel like a seductress or just to feel luminescent or happy that you can breathe those in allow them to come into your body and alchemize in whatever way that it needs. And then on your exhale, ah, like exhale the sexiest sounds you can make. I promise you in two minutes, if you are like making all these sounds, you're going to be like, I am so turned on. I'm so alive. I'm so ready to go do whatever it is. If it's go like make love to my partner, if it's go give a presentation, you're going to feel like this massive erotic energy in your body that it was there. It was always there. There is nothing and no one who can give it to you. It's all inside of you right now. Just just make some sexy sounds and let it out. Mm, I love that. <laughs> Uh, and you know what I love is the ease in which you explain that, that it's like, it is really that easy to tap into something that just is already there and also has the capacity to support us in each and every moment, each and everything that we step into, we can utilize this energy, this raw energy to really feel delicious doing it all all of it yes oh, like wow. seriously i do this when i'm in my car mm. <laughs> like it's just not a formal practice for me all the time i don't like lay down and light candles and all of that yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. all the traffic okay <sighs> and then by the time you get home you're like yeah baby let's go <laughs> And I wanted to add my own tip for staying connected to pleasure while you launch into your big dreams. One of the things I find that I do is when I'm really working passionately on something and uh, I have a great idea, creative, creativity is kind of hit, is I tend to just like buckle down and go, 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 go. And sometimes I forget to eat or stay connected to you know what's happening in the world around me because I intend to get really hyper-focused. And so I have a practice to help me to really ground in into the moment to stay present and also stay connected to pleasure so that I don't forget that there's actually a really beautiful magical world that exists around me. The practice that I use is just a pleasure moment and so I do things like notice if I'm wearing a luxurious fabric I'll notice the fabric the way it feels on my skin the way it feels to touch. I always have fresh cut flowers around and so I'll take a moment to just gaze upon the flowers and notice their beauty. I definitely make a point of having some sort of chocolate on a daily basis whether that's starting my day with a ceremonial cacao or if it's just having pieces of chocolate throughout the day I when I do take breaks I make sure that those breaks are pleasure breaks. So I go outside, spend time in nature. I will do a pleasure practice, but just making sure that throughout my day, I'm continually connecting into my body and into experiencing pleasure. And that's really, I would say, one of the easiest tools that you can use in terms of making sure that you're supporting yourself with pleasure and you don't get too trapped in that kind of go, go, go mindset. 
I'd love to hear what you thought of all of these practices and which ones you're going to start doing so you can share in the comments below and give this video a like and share it with your friends. Have a great and pleasure-filled day.